hi everyone in today's video I'm going to explain what is non response bias non response bias is when the participants to whom you have sent out a survey are either unwilling to participate in your survey or are purely unable to do so for variety of reasons which may vary from person to person now because this is called non response bias for any bias to take place the source of error has to be systematic in nature and non response bias is the same which means that from your side as a researcher if you do not check for measures which allow such error or such bias to take place then such bias will occur for example if you are trying to collect sensitive information from your research participants say you are representing the government and the government is trying to collect information on how many tax paying citizens are there in the world or um, uh, you are coming in from a community services group and you are trying to find out do people still need uh, benefits from the government or financial remuneration from the government uh, such people uh, may refuse to provide you with the accurate or the correct or the honest response especially if a person has not been paying their taxes or they have not uh, uh, they have already uh, found work and they do not need any kind of financial benefits from the government so of course uh, people who are abusing such benefits will refuse to participate in your survey uh, this can also happen if you have designed the survey in such a way that the survey maybe does not even open up on uh, mobile phones or iPads and these days people uh, you know they are always working through their mobile phones they are working through their iPads um, and so you may have sent a survey link which opens wonderfully on your laptop or your computer but it doesn't work on the mobile phone because you haven't tested it so then of course the non-response bias will occur now like I said it varies from person to person so the reasons could be sometimes simply that uh, you have sent the survey to the wrong audience so you are trying to collect data from um, uh, for, uh, regarding employability trends uh, what are the skills required by employers and you send it to the students or you send it to students who have graduated but not yet found employment and you are trying to find out what skills are being sought for uh, in employees but they have not found employment yet you are actually sending it to the wrong target audience so in this case non-response bias will occur it will also occur if a person simply refuses uh, at the moment because they are busy but doesn't mean that they don't want to answer it they might refuse it at the moment but if you contact them few days or a couple of weeks down the line they may accept to um, um, uh, participate in the survey it will also occur if you have designed the survey to become so long that it takes uh, too long for the respondents to respond to the survey uh, so ideally a survey should be less than 10 minutes that is what it is said uh, because people don't want to spend their own time in trying to answer survey questions which in sort of uh, doesn't benefit them in any way so uh, then sometimes the survey link will go and sit in a some uh, someone's junk mail they it will not even reach their inbox for them to be able to open it and sometimes people uh, just uh, forget about it they might want to answer it and they forget about it so these are the different reasons why non-response bias may occur and it may be partly uh, your fault as a researcher if you do not follow up uh, on the invitation sent out so how can you avoid non-response bias so there are many ways you can avoid it one of the ways is of course you make sure that you have tested out the survey yourself make sure you know how much time it takes to complete the survey make sure that you have tested whether the survey link opens up on all the different devices so that people have the flexibility of answering that survey using different devices uh, the second way is that uh, make sure that you allow sufficient time for people to respond to the survey so it you should not be sending out survey and is expecting them to respond at very short notice because initially the people will not take notice many people don't even respond to emails um, many people if you send the survey invitations by envelopes in the olden days you know um, people used to send out survey uh, forms uh, by envelopes people uh, think it's junk and they throw it uh, some researchers would uh, include self-addressed envelopes 
along with the survey form so that the uh, respondents do not have to spend their own money in uh, posting the survey back uh, and those were in the in the olden days many people still do it but many many people can't be bothered filling up surveys on paper and then putting it in the self addressed envelope and then posting it back so you have to make sure that you follow up you give enough time for the people to follow up to 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 respond to think about it because some people will fill up part of the survey then they forget about it and then come back to it later so make sure that you allow sufficient time you also have to keep sending follow up notices uh, to people who have not responded to your survey you make sure that you have identified a targeted audience and in some way that you can reach that targeted audience so often times that sometimes we collect data from students um, in in universities it is easy access for us but we have to make sure here the bias doesn't occur because if you are the lecturer and the researcher and you are trying to collect data from your own students uh, your students may either feel pressured or they may respond in such a way which is favorable to the research researcher so at that point of time you have to include a neutral party uh, to collect this data and the survey but make sure that you then get the survey from everyone you have to make sure that if people are filling up the surveys there is a reminder that they should check uh, that all the questions have been filled properly uh, they should not have partially uh, filled questionnaires coming back to you uh, you also have to make sure you you avoid double barrel questions for example if there is a question in the survey which says are you a researcher and a lecturer in the university and then uh, that particular respondent may be either a researcher uh, and not a lecturer or just a lecturer and not a researcher uh, and they don't know how to answer that question right so try to use close ended questions closed loop questions uh, try to give uh, a likert scale as an option so sometimes uh, we we ex we are maybe trying to get some data about customer experience from the respondents at that point of time we should not only include the options that we want people to uh, choose uh, we should give them a scale that they can choose uh, so that the responses are honest and they can uh, they are happy to express what they really want to express right uh, you have to make sure that the links if they are sitting in the junk mail um, should not be so because uh, you can if you know why how it can be avoided is that if you are sending to links to people whom you know personally then you can send a follow up message uh, asking them if they have received it or not because sometimes you may have direct connection with the respondents but the survey link may be sent through a website or separate third party and that survey link may go and sit into the junk box of the receiver so if you have a direct relationship you can ask them you can follow up with them that have you received this link you should test it out amongst your own peers or uh, you can do a pilot testing of the survey to make sure that the survey is reaching people that the survey is not taking longer than you have promised and that it is opening up on the different devices so try to keep your questionnaire short that is why it is very important for you to uh, get your survey questionnaire pilot tested proofread uh, approved by your supervisors because uh, if you have unnecessary questions in the survey which is just lengthening the length uh, which is just lengthening the time taken for the respondent to uh, respond but it is not contributing in any way to your research question or research problem then it is unnecessary question you should avoid unnecessary questions you should only include the questions which uh, which get you the data which you really need so these are the different ways that you can avoid non response by Um, and because this is a bias, and it should be addressed. And uh, if the problem with non-response bias is that uh, if people are unwilling to participate, if people uh, simply are unable to participate, sometimes they are unable to participate because they have opened the link but they cannot respond to it. Then what happens is the data that you are collecting is actually uh, from a sample which may not be representative. A representative of the larger population of the larger sample so the data that you get uh, or the data that you obtain uh, is a little bit skewed uh, towards people who have responded so you may not actually be able to understand the phenomena or the problem that you are studying and the findings will not reveal what actually is the phenomena in the society or uh, the, the the actual problem that you are investigating so as a researcher it is your responsibility to make sure that you get data from as many respondents as possible so that uh, the data that you get 
can then be generalized towards a larger population. So that is why a non-response person knowing about it and making sure you follow up on it and getting the data that you actually need is very important for you as a researcher. So I hope this video was useful for you. Um, in my next video, I will also explain the difference between non-response bias and response bias. So please make sure you like, share, subscribe and uh, follow up on my videos. See you soon. Bye for now.